In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how to seam a horizontal edge of one piece of fabric to the vertical edge of another piece. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. This is a sweater that I knit years ago and I knit it in pieces and then it was seamed. The side seams here had vertical seams. That is, I had two edges where the fabric was knit like this and I seamed the edges together. So for the vertical edge, I was seaming one row on one side of the seam to its counterpart on the other side of the seam. So I was matching the seam up row for row all the way up the seam. Then at the shoulders here, I had horizontal seams. So instead of seaming the edges together from side to side, the seam was done from head to head, but still there was one stitch on one side of the seam that was joined to a stitch on the other side. So it was one to one the entire way. The sleeve had both of these types of sleeves. At the underarms, I had horizontal seams. And then along most of the sleeve cap, I had vertical seams. So it's seaming again, uh, a vertical edge to a vertical edge until I got to the very top of the sleeve. And this is where I needed a different seaming method because here I had a horizontal edge that I needed to seam to a vertical edge. So I have a couple of swatches here where I'm going to simulate that process of seaming the top of a sleeve cap to the armhole of a sleeve. Now I don't have a seam here, so instead I've marked the center of this strip of fabric so we can see where that seam would be. Not all sweaters have seams at the top. Sometimes you can identify that, that center point immediately just because there's a seam, but other times you might need to mark it. So this piece of fabric is four inches wide. And what I want to do is center it on this blue piece of fabric so that I can seam it to four inches worth of blue fabric. The challenge when you are seaming a horizontal edge to a vertical edge is that you typically will have more rows than you will have stitches. You can't just join one stitch on one side of the seam to one row on the other. There are gonna be times when you need to capture one stitch on this side of the seam to two rows on the other side of the seam. So I worked this in worsted weight wool. I, I have 20 stitches here, so it's five stitches per inch. And this was also worked uh, at uh, five stitches per inch, but I have seven rows per inch. So I have 20 stitches here that I need to seam to 28 rows here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is line up the centers. And the next thing I wanna do is mark where the four inch span that I'm knitting here. Now I know I have seven rows per inch here, so I'm gonna just count 14 rows in each direction. But if you're, if you're seaming together something that's very long and it makes it very difficult to count rows or just tedious, or you have a stitch pattern that makes that difficult. What you can do instead is actually just measure that length. So I have, this is four inches wide, so each half is two inches. I could just measure two inches down and then mark it, um, or I can count my rows and mark it. So right here you can see I've, I've marked between these two stitches. I've got 10 stitches in this direction and 10 stitches in that direction. I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna to work toward each edge. So when I'm working toward the left, the yellow edge will be down and the blue edge will be in uh, above. And then when I'm working from this direction here, I'm actually gonna turn it upside down. And you do this just because then you can be sure that this is absolutely centered, that the two centers are absolutely correct. And then if things get a little bit off as you're seaming in the other direction, you can kind of fudge as you get toward the edge here. But that way, the, the most visible central area is going to be completely centered. I've got a yarn needle that's threaded with seaming yarn. So I'm going to come up through the center. You see how these stitches all look like Vs. I want to come up through the center of the stitch that's below the bind off chain. 
So I'm coming up here and I'm only going to pull my yarn halfway through because I'm going to only be seaming half of the seam and then I'm going to use the other end of the yarn tail to go in the other direction. So another good reason for starting in the center is that you reduce the amount of wear on the seaming yarn because the entire strand of yarn has to be pulled through each stitch as you're seaming. And if you can preserve half of that yarn so that it hasn't been pulled through for when you seam the other half, um, that saves wear and tear on the yarn. And now I want to find that vertical bar, it's vertical in this perspective, between the selvage stitch and the second stitch. So you can see where the green marker is and to the left of it is what looks like a vertical bar. So I'm going to catch that vertical bar like this and then pull my yarn through. So I've done that. And then for the next stitch, I'm gonna go back down through the center. So however I, had, wherever this yarn came from before, I'm gonna go back down through the center of this V and then up through the center of the next one. So you can always see that there's two strands of yarn on the needle when I'm getting ready to pull it through. So that was capturing one of these bars. Sometimes you're going to have to capture two. So you again come between the selvage stitch and the second stitch in. And you can see that I've captured two of those vertical bars. And now I've pulled it through. And you see, I'm not pulling tight yet either. I'm keeping this loose. So again, I go down through the center of the V and then up through the center of the next V like that. And then I can capture, I'll either be capturing one, let me capture one bar this time. Down and up. I'm going to capture just one again this time. Okay, so now I'm getting to my last one, I'm going down through the center, up through the center, and you can see where my orange marker is. I'm going to capture two. We want to pull this seaming yarn to close that up. So once we've pulled it tight, then you can't even see the seaming yarn at all and everything is lined up perfectly. You can see the line of V's of the blue coming all along the yellow. Now I'm going to thread the other end of the yarn to the yarn needle. And this time I'm going to turn this way. So in this orientation, we can see the V's are going in this direction. And so everything's upside down. So, but in, in this time, instead of coming up and down through the center of the V, we're going to come up and down between the two V's in this orientation. So I'm coming up right here. And then I'm going to do the same procedure on this side where I want to make sure I'm coming between the salvage stitch and the second stitch. I'm going to catch one thread here. And again, I'm going to go down where this green is coming out. So I'm going to go down, I'm capturing around that V. But again, I have two yellow strands on my needle when I'm pulling this through. And this time, this time I'm capturing two blue strands.
and I'm doing this I'm doing the same thing on the blue side where where my needle is coming down where the green yarn came out before I'm coming down going back down where I came out before and this time and because I'm come I can use that as a guide and I have this bent tip on my needle it's easy to kind of just see when I can get two strands as I get toward the end, I can look at how many stitches I have remaining that I need to capture and how many strands I still have left. So I can, I can kind of decide if I want to just pick up one or if I'm going to pick up two each time. I've got my final one here and I can just come back down through here. Now if you have a very long edge it it might put a lot of strain on the yarn to just pull from here to tighten everything up. So you can tighten up by pulling on one of these strands and tightening up a little bit at a time. And you can do this as you seam too. You can wait to seam or wait to pull the, the strands, or you can kind of do it as you go. So there I have the vertical seam to horizontal. So along the horizontal edge, we're always capturing every single stitch along that edge. But sometimes we're capturing one strand along the vertical edge and sometimes two. And what I mean by capturing that strand is when we come between that salvage stitch and the next stitch in, we're either capturing one of these, which means we're capturing one row, or we're capturing two. And I was doing, sometimes I was doing one and sometimes I was doing two. So one approach is that when you are connecting, when you're uh, first connecting the horizontal edge to the vertical edge, that you don't just connect them at the center and then mark on the vertical edge where you want them to end, but you actually could connect them at different intervals. So maybe every couple of inches you clip them together and so that you can focus on a particular span of stitches. And then what you can do is use sort of a standard formula. And the standard formula would be to seam two stitches to every three rows. So the first stitch you would seam together with one row and then the next stitch you would seam together with two rows. And you would just alternate between one strand two strands, one strand, two strands, until you approached the marker where the two pieces of fabric were connected. And then you look ahead and you see how many stitches do you have left before that marker, and then how many vertical strands do you have remaining. And so if you have the same number, then you could just switch to one stitch, one row, one stitch, one row, like that until you got to the end. Maybe you might need to do one more stitch to two, to two rows one more time. But you just look ahead. So you use that standard pattern, a one to one, one to two, one to one, one to two, until you get toward the end and then you see what you have left and you just fudge it that way. And then on the next section, you do the same thing. So that's one approach. So I use the actual stitch to row gauge ratio. In my example, I had five stitches and seven rows for every inch. So my ratio is five stitches to seven rows. So I can say seven minus five equals two. This tells me how many times I'm going to have to capture two strands as I seam these five stitches. Now this can be really hard to visualize. I have a hard time visualizing this and I'm very mathematical. So I draw a little picture and then I can see what the pattern actually is. So I have my seven vertical strands along the vertical edge that I'm seaming and then I have my five stitches along my horizontal edge. And I know that two times I have to capture two strands at once. So I'm going to just group two of them together here and two of them together here. I kind of spread them out amongst 
this span of stitches. And now what I can see is that for one stitch, I'm going to capture one strand. For the next stitch, I'm going to capture two strands. Then I'm going to do one for one, one for one, and then in the last and the fifth stitch, I'm going to capture two strands again. And then I can just repeat that um, constantly. Now it's not as simple a pattern, it's a little more complicated than one to one, one to two, one to one, one to two, like I showed you before, but I, but I don't typically have to look ahead as much unless maybe at the very, very end, as they get to the, the very last couple of stitches, I might confirm um, that my pattern is still continuing to work. Like many knitters, seaming isn't my favorite task, mostly because it's not knitting. But once you learn to seam properly, the task is less daunting, the results are really satisfying, and you're more willing to take on projects that do include at least some seaming. Many knitters also hate swatching, but trying out new techniques on swatches is a great way to learn. You lose nothing from the process, and your projects will be better for the practice. If you like this seeming video, you might like these other videos as well. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks, Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.